You know who I was as a kid? Who? This asthma of mine. Coughing. <laughs> Brunch. Hit it, boys. And just like that, White Boy Summer in mid March has come to a close. Yeah, I wish we could put together a uh, like a tombstone that was like March maybe twenty seventh to March 29th, White Boy Summer. How long do you think it would have taken us to build? Oh, it is late March, huh? Yeah, it's like the 29th? Yeah, it's I had twentieth right now. It's the thirtieth. Yeah, so. Is so this is coming out on like the April fourth. Yeah, that's right. You how know many, what? How many days? Do you know like the number of days in a month? Because I know there's like a trick. To there's a that. trick, but uh, as the Who say in Baba O'Reilly, I don't get tricked again. Okay, that's I'm right. not gonna go around tricking anybody. It's thirty days has January, April, May, then February, June has thirty one. July isn't even a month. February, we've already accounted for. That's right. August slipped away like a moment of time because you're always mine. And it's been a long December. It's been, it's a long December, so that's 31. Yeah. That's how, You know what? That is. The, let's use that as the only one. What? How to tell Lo- it's a long December. December. <laughs> how, you, how do you tell how many days are in a month? Well, it's a long December. But there's there's a, a reason to believe. Yeah. Maybe this maybe this year will be better than the last. A good stupid bit is music critic Steve Hyden tweets throughout December. It's been a long December. And then people will respond with lyrics and stuff. But but it's been a long December is actually a useful thing because as we all know from Will 2K featuring Either Drew Hill or Cisco. I always felt bad for the Drew Hill guys whenever Cisco was on a song. Because for all we know, it was featuring the whole group. Mm-hmm. But let's be real. You're only here in Cisco. But in Will 2K, what did he say? Uh, it's finally here. Something like, man, come along. A lot of like yearbook type of uh, conjecture. But then he says, 31st of December. Man, I remember when the clock dropped for 90. Now it's 9-9. Huh. Ten years behind me. <laughs> That's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> Super hot fire thing. Just like dudes falling over. As someone reminded us of Super Hot Fire recently. Um, Matt Porter, Boston Globe writer, tweeted something, and it was a reference to Super Hot Fire. I don't think anybody got it because I didn't. I definitely. It looked didn't. like a DJ tweet. Not a whole <laughs> lot of. It, it had not a whole lot of likes or action, but he responded to it himself. So it really was uh, a DJ tweet. But uh, one of the great super hot fire moments, unbelievable bar when he says, "Here's my girlfriend's number." Psych, that's not her number, <laughs> and the whole <laughs> oh group loses it. But uh, white boy Christ. summer, predictably, has crashed and burned. I don't even know if it officially has crashed and burned. We talked a little bit on it's Monday, and people are pissed about how Chet Hanks. Is j- just seems like a very very stupid person, not necessarily a malicious person. I don't think like he's, he's posted a like dog. he's posted. Um, someone sent a message. They were like, "Hi, I'm an Asian person. Can I participate in White Boy Summer?" And he was like, "Of course, White White Boy Summer is for like what, this right. isn't include. Why why wouldn't this be inclusive?" And I'm like, "Dude, you called it White Boy Summer. So really, really, just." dumb guy and i think that people mostly have been laughing at him more than with him again doesn't seem malicious but uh today or yesterday one of these days april 5th could have been in december he released the first batch of merch for white boy summer and it is a black t-shirt with the most aggressive gothic script that says white boy summer on it and if you do not follow chet hanks on instagram which even i don't follow chet hanks on instagram if you don't know who chet hanks is and most people are very thankful just for confusion's sake to not like you're more confused if you do know who chet hanks is than if you don't know who chet hanks is yeah but if you don't know what this is and that 
hey, look, there's this guy who does like really, really goofy stuff, but people aren't too mean to him because he just really, it just really seems like he's a dumb guy. So we kind of just like let him play in the corner and try not to get very close to it. That's basically exactly what uh, everybody's, I feel like, a- approach to Chet Hanks is. It's just like, let him have his, his fun time over there in, in his playhouse. Right, right. We're, we're, we're going nowhere. <laughs> right. we're, we're nowhere near this thing. But he's, he, I saw this merch because someone tweeted out like, Chet, the Chet Hanks merch is out and it looks as racist as merch could possibly look. Like, if you do not know... I think the exact term was it looks aggressively racist. Man, if you don't know what this is and, again, that it's like a – it's a, a weird thing that, that yeah, if no one's really out, getting close to. If you're going to put out merch, you got to put out, like, goofy-ass merch, like colorful tie I was going to like say, bubbly tie, man, just Jack last year's stuff. Yeah. Or, honestly, Jack like – uh Harambe merch line. Jack Saturdays are for the boys stuff, yeah. you know? Like, toss some – Toss some American flags on there. It's like typical uh, Fourth of July stuff you might see. Just just put out tank like tops. Mimic beer logos and white boy su- replace the font. Right, white boy summer. Again, m- most importantly, maybe ch- change the name from <laughs> white boy summer. But but if you don't know who this dude is and you don't know what this thing he's doing is, and you're walking around, and you're I'm like saying appealing to aggressive people with like the way that this merch looks. And you're set, and you're sending out the message, "White Boy Summer," with no context. It's not gonna go to great places, I don't think. I'm saying, I, I mean, sig- obviously, a person of color is gonna see that and be like, "What the hell?" Like, there, there, there is going to be legitimately people who see that and are worried for fear of what stuff like that often is, you know. Mm-hmm. But. The average person walking around, if I'm walking down the street and I don't know what this whole thing is, and there's a bunch of dudes all wearing shirts that say White Boy Summer on it. That's alarming. And it's – that is definitely alarming. Like, you you are moving you, – you're trying to get away from that. And, again, this this – stupid this stupid kid he's trying to at best push this extremely tone deaf and at worst it is like threatening right 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 so he's trying to if you watch his videos the message he's trying to push is hey let's up our games a little bit right let's be it's not quite gillette ad but there is some hey let's do better we can do better Let's dress nicer. Let's do these things. Let's elevate our uh, our persona. Right. I was gonna say it's it's not quite a kind vibes thing because kind I vibes. don't know if he can. Uh, th- th- that's a um, kind vibes is a thing often pushed by Ezra Koenig of okay. just everyone be nice to each other, okay. which is a. I mean, that's a very sad thing that like that should go without saying. Mm-hmm. But um, they'll they'll say like, oh, this song is very kind vibes, where like the message will be gr- grounded in reality, but also like, hey, we can we can be nice to each other. Chet Hanks is trying to push. I think. Look, <laughs> we're we're not getting anywhere near this kid's brain, but <laughs> yeah, trying to decipher the message is a little difficult. But he does say it, and what doesn't he say like at the end of one of the things like, hey. Let's evolve, gentlemen. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. stop being Pikachu's. Let's become Raichu's. And again, his idea of a Raichu is you have to wear certain flip flops and you can't wear a salmon colored yeah, shirt. Let's, let's not pretend that, that Raichu's cooler than Pikachu. Uh, definitely not. No. Definitely I mean, Pikachu not. is Pikachu is innocence. Pikachu is as cool as like a basic level entry Pokemon can get. What Pokemon are you? Let's do a uh, quiz. Let's do a quiz. I'm gonna do. Uh, I've known you for a lot of years, and I've asked you questions, and you've answered them already, so I can spit out the answer right now. You are... Uh, <laughs> no, no. Who are you? I know... I- I'm a few different Pokemon. It depends on the day. But you would be... Let me just quickly... Uh, Pokemon Originals. I swear me- to God, if you say uh, Magikarp, I'll kill you. No, you, <laughs> you are... So I've got one in mind it could be, but let's see if there's someone better. Okay. I think that you're... Yeah, I'm not seeing anyone that's topping this. I think there's a good chance that you're Geodude. 
Geo dude, is yeah, the little the rock guy with the arm. Yeah, you're right. It's fair. just a, like a just like a, a head and then two big arms. I didn't even mean it like that, but that's physically you are Geo dude. That's hilarious. I will absolutely take that 100. percent Geo dude is a cool Pokemon. Yeah, Hell we yeah. should sell uh, Pete Pete O dude merch. Maybe we'll have to work on it. You know, I think uh, I think if I had to pick one for you, I'm gonna pick uh, I'm gonna pick Vulpix. Vulpix, that Vulpix has got like a little flair, uh, but it's like a friendly. Oh yeah, yeah, I know yeah. Vulpix. Yeah, got those. Uh, I mean, it's it's got that big, big kind tail. of a tail. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. So it's just that like could if, be like your hair. Right. I was gonna say if you took like my hair and my thighs and wrapped them all up put them on my back i'd probably immediately fall down and just like, wouldn't be able to walk but i think i can also be uh honestly i won't lie sometimes i'm a goldine is uh what's a goldine that's the f- i know it's a fish the one with the horn on its head i think it's just like a de- it's just depressed it's just kind of like goldine 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 <laughs> goldine goldine okay everything it says is kind of the same what about that's like all a pokemon or lax no you know who i Slowpoke. you know who i was as a kid who this asthma of mine, coughing. <laughs> oh, I'm mad at you. You tweeted thinking about doing a beer the yeah. other day. It blew up, and it was a great tweet. It inspired me to do a beer. But I was like, yo, how many times did I tweet my classic, I am once again asking you how many beers you think I'm about to smoke <laughs> meme? <laughs> I didn't even remember To that. nothing. <laughs> I didn't even remember I know. That. They're completely unrelated. Yeah. But, like, one is I've put thought into, <laughs> all right, I've got the meme, folks. Bernie Sanders asked, saying I am once again asking how many beers you think I'm about to smoke. You've d- and you were just like, nice day. Think I'll have a beer. And everyone's like, I'm feeling this meme. <laughs> the the simplicity of you saying, like, I'm, I'm, you were, like, very in on smoking a beer. I've always said while, that, yeah. And it's yeah. very fucking funny. Yeah. So, dude, I mean, take it next time. Next Saturday, say, thinking about smoking some beers. What are you looking at? 600 retweets? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Quite possibly. There was a lot. Those are the best. When you just send off, like, a dumbass tweet and it's, like, 2,000 likes. We should make merch of ourselves, like, holding. It'll, it'll look like, uh, basically, the cans would be... Um, like a white claw, like like a right like, white claw. I was gonna say Red Bull, but yeah, yeah. Tall boy, skinny boy. Right, right. You're just holding it like a cigarette. It's like a Mick Ultra. smoking beers. It's beer smoke o'clock. Or I'm once again asking. I should just I, don't know. I should replace my uh my profile picture with the cigarette hanging out and just have like uh like a Mick Ultra. Yes, yes. We gotta we gotta read today's episode is brought to you by Ballsy. We don't like to talk about our balls much on this podcast, but we like to well, we like talking to about take care of themselves. We like talking about uh, health and hygiene. Uh, hygiene, that's the word. Yeah. So knowing what we know about uh, the hygienic tendencies. Hygiene. Hi, Dave. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Gene. <laughs> hey, Dave. What's that box you're carrying? This. This the is a ballsy. box. This is a box of products from Ballsy. What's it for? Hi, Gene. Hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. What's that box? Who's on? Hey, who's on? Then who's on second? If you're, no, the box is for hygiene. This, Hi, Dave. This is boxing. I thought this was baseball. You know the classic routine. <laughs> Knowing what we know about the hygienic tendencies of a lot of men, uh, I'm willing to bet some of you are gross. Probably use three and one. Hi, shampoos. Pete. Shut up. Probably use three one shampoos and conditioners and body wash. Uh, stop being gross and start giving the individual parts of your body the attention that they deserve. That's where Ballsy comes in. Ballsy offers a full line of male hygienic products, including their famous. Ball Guard Ball Deodorant. It's a liquid powder that reduces sweat, irritation, and odor all in the places where you do not want those Hi, things. Hi, my name is... Gene. What? Gene. It quickly dries as a mess-free powder. And ah, go- Gene! Shut Rest up. in peace. <laughs> Jessica Walter, the goat. It quickly dries... 
as a mess free powder and goes on with a nice cooling sensation. They've also got freshening sprays, balms, and cologne like the classic yeah. nut rub. Classic. Classic nut rub. It's uh the nut rub is a great beeswax cologne that I like to use on my neck. Just been doing that. Really? Just taking a little finger of the uh the beeswax and rubbing it on the neck. It smells great. Nice. And if you want to put some of the nut rub while you're taking a bath, bath gang, that's what we call bub rub. <laughs> That's right, little sis. Uh, <laughs> they sent over a ballsy sent over a care package, and uh, we're big fans. Uh, I love the body wash that has the activating charcoal and again beeswax on the neck. That's exciting. That is exciting body wash because when it says it's got charcoal in it, you're like, that's what they all say. You squeeze that stuff out, looks like charcoal. That is charcoal. It, is it goes on like charcoal. <laughs> it smells unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, strongly recommend. This is no snake oil charcoal. This no. is the real deal. No, no, no. And it's not it's not just charcoal. It's activating charcoal. That's right. The weather is getting warmer, warmer and you do not want to find yourself a victim of swamp ass or god forbid swamp nuts. So go to Ballsy. Hey, happy. Can I have one of those? <laughs> go to ballsybrand.com. That's B A L L S Y brand.com and use promo code washed 20 for 20 percent off um that's washed 20 for 20 percent off your ballsy purchase thanks a lot brett you sent us over our first ad read and forgot to include uh the promo code last week way to be great at your job we nailed the read and you screwed us once again that's ballsybrand.com b-a-l-l-s-y brand.com Go there, use promo code WASH20, and start treating your family jewels like royalty. We've got a uh, Prince William update in his sexiness. We talked about it on It's Monday and People Are Pissed. The internet named <laughs> Prince William the sexiest bald man alive, and then you read the story, and no, it didn't at all. at all. Nobody named him anything. No. People just search Prince William and sexy a lot. Nothing about Prince William sexy because he's bald, so this whole thing was absolutely fake bogus stuff real waste of time because everybody knows there's more beautiful bald men than prince william shut up prince william he's beautiful no matter what they say but there are a lot of people whose words might bring him down you dig so we are doing for this week's bonus episode on patreon we're just talking about a lot of beautiful bald men of which there are many so patreon.com slash listen to brunch if you're already doing that, you're probably watching us right now because you can watch the video episodes and you do get the bonus episode on Friday. Patreon.com slash listen to brunch. Subscribe. And here's the little wrinkle we're adding in. Stay subscribed. Stay subscribed, baby. That's right. Stay, also, don't don't leave us. You just got to give us a little more time. We're trying to kick this thing into high gear. That's right. Just need just need a little bit of a little bit of faith, Arthur. Yeah. Need some cash. Right. Just give, just subscribe. Stay. Stay locked in. You want to do it for the year? That's great. If you want to go month to month, cool. Just do it for every month when you do it. That's right. $2 tier, $5 tier, and $10 tier. I mean, what more could you want? We thought about doing the, have we talked about the, this is a stick up tier? No, I don't think that we've officially done it. I think we should do it. Okay. We should. We've talked about there being a tier called, this is a stick up. And it's a picture of both of us uh, wearing uh, masks or bandanas. bandanas. Yeah, maybe like... Uh, maybe like a cowboy hat. Right, just like old school robbers. And it says, uh, this is a stick up and you don't get any of the benefits from either of the previous tiers. And it's just like $200 that's it. a month. It's $100 or $200 a month. <laughs> yeah. $200 a month? Yeah. For the year, though, you get, what, 10% off? Yeah. So It's only like $2,000. So it's like 18 hundo g's and <laughs> and you get nothing you get nothing but think about think of all the fees that patreon takes and the taxes that come out of it we're not getting anything either so That's let's right. be let's be huey lewis and be stuck with each other hell yeah yes it's true you know that song no i'm so happy to be stuck with you sounds like a banger it's all right you know what it sounds like 
Huey Lewis. That sounds exactly <laughs> like it would be a Huey Lewis the yeah. song. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Also, uh, we're almost halfway to the uh, to the sleepover. It's pretty big. Pretty we big are deal. actually. So this is sad because we knew the day we knew the day was coming that we would actually be almost halfway to the sleepover. And we've we've been we've liked to say, hey, we're almost halfway to the sleepover. We liked a bit of saying we're almost halfway. Right when we were like. 20 25 people away we are now two people away from halfway to the sleepover and we can discuss this at some point maybe maybe if we hit a certain number what if we did like a concentrated hey if we get this many subscribers in a week we'll bump it up i mean obviously we want to get our subscribers to a good sustainable number so the podcast brings in a little money but we also want to do the sleepover but we also want to do the sleepover we don't want to wait so you can see it's right like we're gonna run out of ideas for the (laughs) sleepover Uh, i was thinking about i was just thinking about things we could do in that sleepover that sounds that sounds pg-13 but uh pg there's so many things we can do in the sleepover i was i was uh crushing some jenny's ice cream have we talked about jenny's ice cream um uh it's the one didn't you get it at uh when we were hanging out with Feidelberg in Newport? No. But what's Jenny's I ice wish. cream? I wish. Jenny's ice cream is an outrageously expensive ice cream. Okay. It is Oh no, we talked about the alcohol. We got the right. alcoholic ice cream. Right, right. It yeah. had uh ice cream in it. And that's the only thing that happened that that's weekend right. and did not steal a dog. Everybody kept their and my dad loves that story. It's such a good story. <laughs> my dad is like the dog lover of all dog lovers, I and th- I thought that he would hear that story be and because obviously, like we would not intentionally right. steal a dog, like accidentally taking a dog just from next thinking door we were and thinking it. we were saving it is, and everybody being okay, obviously, like yeah. n- n- nothing bad happened. That is one of the, like the the funniest harmless things that's ever happened and i also feel so very blessed that like a guy like feidelberg who is one of the most interesting people in the world like i hung out with him maybe a few times and one of the times (laughs) was a story that has been worth him telling over and over and over again so very blessed do you know about uh feidelberg's uh the the change in feidelberg's life Mm. i don't mean to tell tales out of school but uh we are not the only Misty guys in the brunch universe. Really, Fidelberg became all in on Father John Misty yeah. at some point during the pandemic. It seems like that was a, it was a natural. It was gonna totally. Happen. It seemed well overdue, honestly. Like for a guy who is just like full in on depression, yeah, and being like sad boy, season. an eccentric, depressed person. Yeah. That's why I like him. Right, uh, I- incredible. Uh, also, I hate to do this, but like new Misty one. I'm kind of I'm kind of waking up every day saying that. What? New Misty when? Oh right, yeah. Like new album when, buddy. He had a kid, something like he's got like life happened, pandemic happened. Right, like pandemic happened. It like, should be like Misty season. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Taylor Swift put out like 14 bad albums in that time. <laughs> she one of them one <laughs> album of the year. So, oh, huge congrats to friend of the podcast, although never guest on the podcast, Eric Slick played drums on that new taylor swift song Mm -hmm. with Marin morris so awesome super cool to see cool things happen to cool people you can check out eric slick's solo album wiseacre it's one of my favorites of last year also on natalie prass's stuff and dr dog that's his uh main hustle dog rules dr dog is so good Man, I still got to put out a playlist. I've been chipping away at a music is back playlist, but I don't know exactly what to put on it. I've started to make a as heard on brunch playlist. Mm-hmm. That's been a fun thing. Like just things we've discussed. So far it's a lot of BTS. But okay. it's what has it got on it? It's got some BTS. As heard on brunch is such a good idea. Right. Like, we, so we've done like a playlist of just like songs that we like, but Right. I just like a... I just started. It. It's got uh, Poor Man Dan, the theme song. To Brunch by Diane Coffey, mm-hmm. uh, Wonder by Natalie Merchant, Picasso's Last Words. I'm just doing things that we talked about recently. Uh, so we talked about that with the, the Wings story and um, Dustin Hoffman. Dynamite by BTS. You Make My Dreams has come up on the podcast before. Splish Splash by Bobby Darren. So that's just on one. That's really just one episode's worth of stuff. It'll be a good bit. What's that? 
Uh, just adding, you make my dreams like seven times. Yes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Pete got into the <laughs> Pete got into the playlist gang. Like, oh shit, it came up again. Yeah. Here we go. So I'll, I'll I've got a music is back and a as referenced on brunch playlist. I'll I'll try to get those out. Hopefully for Friday. And that can be kind of like a that can be a non Patreon thing. Like I like that we've got extra stuff that we do that isn't Patreon only, but if you like the Monday streams and if you want the playlists and stuff like that, consider joining the Patreon gang, but you don't have to. I really do want everyone to see Dylan on Dylan though. Yeah. Yeah, I mean like I, I think that the uh the bonus episodes have been a lot of fun. And it does sort of break my heart to know that there's content that people aren't getting it's a it's a different it's like uh, we we talk all the time in a million different ways but like somehow the bonus episodes kind of have a different vibe to them it's just and like a com- it's just a conversation not that like this isn't a conversation but it feels like like okay well now now the cameras are off right. so like let's kind of uh it's a bit more it's a bit more chill That's it's right. interesting okay so that's the uh, what was that even an update on? How do we even get there? I don't know. I'm wearing a red hat today. You notice that? That was yeah. a big. That was a big this big moment for you. Big moment. This I is haven't the first seen the hat I put- in a while, and I love the hat so much. It's a Budweiser hat, and you know, if you don't know, know anything about me, I love a Budweiser. I'm wearing a, a marble racing hat right now. Nice. Yeah, I mean Bud. I mean Bud Heavy is the the king of beers, as some might say. It is. I agree with that. If if someone else hadn't said it a long time ago, I feel like at some point in my life I would have said it's the king of beers because as as domestic beers go, like I'll I'm always going Bud Heavy before I go. I've become a Miller. I've, I've become you're a like high a, life guy. I've become a two domestic beer rotation guy. Bud Heavy, no high life. Yeah, I just never became a high life person. Really? Yeah, They're so good. I like people that are high life people though. I've become like a. Th- I've become like a three cheap, three beer cheap beer rotation guy. Yeah. Got Budweiser, Miller High Life, and then Modelo. Modelo is the best. Nice, nice. I've got the, I got the beer fridge now, so yeah. it's all loaded with that fancy, fancy good stuff. So I got to remind myself, like, hey, don't forget about Bud Heavy. You've, uh, you've like really implanted the idea of me getting a, a beer fridge in my head, just right here. Beer fridge is awesome, but two things. I mean, the the noise won't really matter. But uh, is it noisy? I mean, it, it's just it having hums. a fridge there, so yeah. you're so you're just gonna make this room a little louder. But when you load it up with like IPAs and stuff like that, <laughs> put on your drinking pants. Yeah, I know. Because that doesn't just stay there. You yeah. know, if, if, if I, and I've and had it, to do and that, it, and it increases the pr- the pressure of keeping keeping it stocked. Yeah. I mean, it looks bad if you don't right. have it stocked. So I and I also put the light on in there. So if you don't have, if you don't have that thing full, it looks stupid. But yeah, I go to Treehouse, Idle Hands, Night Shift, wherever it may be, and you load that puppy up. You're like, I have three months to drink all of this. I think that's gonna be uh, the move this this uh, summer. Yeah, is just going around to breweries and drinking outside. That's all I want to do. I did that on Saturday, yeah. not at a brewery, but uh, I went to Cambridge Common, okay, Cambridge, Massachusetts, for uh, those who are from not Massachusetts. Th- those who are who are flecking out like me right now, because I'll tell you, got this puppy going, and um, it was we me and miles drank a couple beers ordered every app they had i noticed just went crazy just talked talked about life it was sounds awesome it was very very great um i don't i shouldn't say this on it i I actually it's not weird miles should work for barstool it dawned on me i just like blurred that out in a conversation with him i was like dude like you're i never considered like you're off the wall enough, but also mysterious enough that you could be a barstool employee. I mean, he could just be he sh- like should just be a content content creator because he just does shit that's wacky and like incredibly creative. Yeah, and he is one of the most interesting people that I know. I love him so much. Um, he, I've also realized that different people 
just like own different platforms. So Miles has been on Twitter forever. I'll interact with him sometimes on there. It didn't dawn on me until the other day. And they're they're starting to write about him in like newspaper outlets. Uh, our friend Miles, we've talked about him before. He's uh, just one of the more fun people in the world. He's one of our concert buddies. He's a huge Carly Rae Jepsen guy. He, during the pandemic, started making bootleg toys. And it just blew up mm -hmm. like so he's well he he went about it in the smartest way possible like he he uh he jumped on like trends the things that were like trending and he was i'll just make a toy of this and people are hot on it they'll search it and like he's been in like D, uh, dms and uh in like responses to to popular tweets and things like that yeah and like He's made them for rappers and, and like all these, like he just made white toy summer for Chet Hanks. Right. So he like, made a, a white toy summer one and people just bid in the comments and it's become a, like a legitimate side hustle for him. And it, it's super cool. I initially, I remember he said he wanted to make some brunch toys, really, which would be sick. I told him, I was like, yo, you should make some circling back toys. You should make the, uh, three 1940s gangsters. That would be toys. hilarious. Or, and like a Wilmons toy. Oh, Wilmons toy would be sick. Yeah. But um, yeah, so my, yeah, Miles and I just hung out, drank some beers, ate. Uh, it was so great. Like the bill came, having to pay a bunch of money for a bunch of stuff you did. Oh my God. It was the best feeling in the world. Yeah. I can't wait. So we're getting there. We're getting, I know that you could have done that last summer too but yeah, we, i did just i did in the beginning and then i kind of stopped and just it's, very it's infrequently more, there's more comfort this year knowing that people are vaccinated and things like people that. getting that like, vax sort of getting out of it which is nice i don't want to uh get too personal but uh are you an honest vaccine getter an honest vaccine getter yeah what does that mean so you a lot of people lie? yeah a lot of people fib in because and, they're, 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 oh, they're, and there's like an argument to be about, made that about like they're, 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 they're like comorbid cor comorbidities and everything. Sure. So saying that like people who don't smoke will say like I smoke, I smoke yeah. and I do things like that or uh, they'll no, say I'm they're skipping the line. Right. And I've heard smart people and people even in the field that will say, hey, what's important is that the vaccines get used and. Sure, maybe you're afraid to do that you're taking somebody else's spot, but what's important is that these vaccines get used. I can't do it. No. Like, especially, couldn't do it. Especially me. Like, I can I can go a, another month, another two months. Right. You you got a like, you got a safe I'm, lifestyle I'm where inside. <laughs> right. Right. I I can't do it. I am eligible soon because of uh, coughing. Because <laughs> that asthma. Yeah. But it's uh it, it's. It's been interesting because so many people have been saying like, "Hey, just look. It's important that you get it. Just get it. Just get." It. And I'm like, "Yo, like, just I'm, my parents get it. You right. know." I'm down to lie about like, shit to to get like a like a weed weed card, but <laughs> right. I'm not trying to lie to get a vaccine. Yeah, it just seems too dirty, especially if, especially if you have your you're safe. You know, right? Where we we Again, work from home I mostly like being inside. Yeah, Pete's like I, I, I'm not getting a vaccine until they bring it to me. <laughs> right. Um. So, what have we gone through? Uh, you wanna, let's talk about the uh, the spiral trailer. I'm excited to, to oh, get there. Oh boy! Yeah, there's a new spiral trailer out, and that's the that's from the Book of Saw. Dude, I I was hoping that maybe we would save that tidbit. For it's a from bit the later Book of the Saw, which is the new uh, love letter to. <laughs> So like my big so the, the this the spiral movie is with Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson and it's from the creators of Saw and it it seems to me like they're trying to turn Saw into a more respectable franchise I guess but the problem there <laughs> is is that it looks exactly like Saw yeah my follow up question would be uh, how do you think that's gonna go <laughs> right so like it's I think one of the endearing things about Saw is that it like I would say like it doesn't take itself too seriously and it doesn't doesn't overshoot. It gets some bad actors, just like some some real stupid storylines. Let's have some fun with it. They throw Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson into the mix. And the friend of the Winklevi. The 
Oh, third yeah, person, yeah, that okay. guy. Yeah, yeah, who cares? Um, they throw those people. Put in some the respect mix. on his name. <laughs> they 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 want to be. They want to seem a little bit more respectable, but who does that benefit? Because it still seems exactly like the the same sort of movie. And then we have to feel bad that like Chris, if it's if it's just a regular Saw movie, I'm gonna feel bad that Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson are attaching themselves to right. a Saw movie. I don't think anyone who doesn't watch it watch the Saw movies is going to want to check this out. No, I think that the Saw people who are pot committed, this absolute idiot, is for sure going to check We're it out because it, yeah. now it's a Saw movie and it's got more respectable actors in it. And again, it's got a little bit more intrigue, but like, I don't think it has any more promise. What you have to keep in mind, though, is the first Saw was was kind of like good movie. Right. It was kind of like, I think, what they're trying to make here, which is it's a horror movie and it's very gory, but. There's a real story, and there's like it makes you think, and you're trying to thriller. figure it out, and like all these things. Whereas all the other ones, where they would just make like a haunted house, stick a bunch of people in it, they all got to go from one challenge it's to the next, and then you porn, and then you find out a bunch of things are happening at the same time. Oh, this is happening at the same time as the the last movie or whatever. Somebody's trapped in a box. Right. <laughs> you know what? That I for whatever reason there was a saw marathon on last night, and. I couldn't sleep. It was like 2 a.m. And Saw 2 was just starting. That the, that's the that's a terrible movie. I was like, that is the wor- a, that, that is the worst movie. But what a terrible movie to begin showing at 2 a.m. Who is up at 2 a.m. and is like, I go for Saw 2 right now. <laughs> right. Saw 2 opens up with perhaps the most upsetting scene of the entire franchise, which is... Oh, is that the, the one with like the... Uh... They're in the glass window of the or is that Saw Three? Oh wait, wait, which one's that? That one is the one with the um the things that are like cranking and they're turning like their legs and stuff. Oh no, that's horrible. Yeah. Uh Saw Two the beginning is the guy is an informant and he is wearing a oh the bear Venus fly trap oh, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so yeah, right so yeah, so like the re- bear trap so yeah. the reverse bear trap is like the classic saw thing that they use in a, a bunch of them where like it where just to like the top half and the bottom half right of and your it jaw. Yeah, opens yeah. up the yeah. other way but um they use that throughout the series to like it's never actually activated mm-hmm. because it's first used on the woman from Becker who's in a bunch of them. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-mm. There's a girl who is a victim that is then a victim again in the second one, and you're like, why do they keep picking her? And then at the end of the second one, you learn that, ooh, she's in on it. She's not even a victim. Oh, yeah, and then yeah, she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, So okay, then okay, she, okay. like, yeah. runs the third one. Yeah. Um, my saw knowledge is <laughs> devastating. <laughs> um, but the reverse bear trap never actually – goes off so that it's in a bunch of them and you're kind of like waiting is this ever going to be used they finally use it on detective on that that the the bad cop that becomes in on it and jigsaw's wife uses it on him he like rips his face apart gets it off then uses it on her and it's finally used but anyway this one in the beginning of saw 2 is the venus flytrap where it's like a Venus flytrap, and there's a bunch of nails inside, and there's a key to open it, and the clue that's given to him is it's right before your eye, and there's a like a scalpel given to him. So the, the, they're basically saying... Cut, it, cut open your eye. Cut your eye out oh. to do it. And the guy's like, no, <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> and then he dies, and yeah. I'm like, I saw yo, that stinks. I saw a tweet yesterday that was like, uh, it was like saw the saw movies wouldn't bother me. I'd just be like, kill me. I'm not playing your silly games. So that that's what I would if I got the like, hey, it's right before your eye thing. I'd be like, yeah, well, I'm dead. My life is over. Right. Yeah. This stinks because the, just because of how this guy judges me. Who knows if I th- does he know the details of my being an informant? I could be doing positive things here. Yeah. Oh. 
Jigsaw. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the sp- the the spiral movie is there's some intrigue, but like I don't like that it's trying to take itself a bit more seriously. I I just want Saw to be like a Blumhouse movie. For, so them doing right. doing like the uh the book of Saw. It's like come on. It comes out Come in. On. It comes out you know in. This isn't a book, <laughs> right? Yeah, you can't say it's from the book of Saw. There was never a book. Right. Do you? It feels. It feels. It has a lot of like Saw meets Seven energy. I never saw Seven. Really? Yeah. You should watch Seven. Seven Rules. That's the one about Costanza's kid. That's right. It comes out in mid-May. Here's a question: Is Spiral going to be our first movie back? Uh, I don't know because like I've been, I might be, I've been debating. I might be vaxxed up by then. I'm, I've been debating whether or not I should go if I'm willing to go to the movies because I've seen some, some, some trailers. Trailer? (laughs) No, that doesn't work. Uh, that I've, uh, been like, I kind of want to see this in the movie theater. I want to see, uh, Kong versus Godzilla or Godzilla versus Kong because like if you're going to go watch a Godzilla vs. Kong movie. Yeah. That's a, like the ultimate popcorn movie where you just want to turn your brain off, sit in a dark room, and watch some monsters fight on the big screen. Toss on some 3D Gs, maybe? 3D glasses? Yeah. I don't know. That seems like a headache waiting to happen. I get headaches in regular regular times watching 3D movies. I think after like not going to the movies for like a year, year and a half, then diving into a 3D movie it seems like bad news. Did you not watch the last king kong movie with 3d g's um i don't remember i do because i will never forget the time i watched randy's head explode oh yeah in 3d the bullet goes through his brain i watched randy's head explode hits the glass and then the glass flies at you too oh really it was the it, it was the most i think i said at the time it was if michael scott had the money to make toby's death in threat level midnight really pop that's, what it, That's what it would be. That's what it would have been. I watched Randy's head explode in 4D at the Taylor Swift concert. That's true. Man, I'd love a concert right now. Same. I'd love a Taylor Swift concert right now. Yep. Maybe Slick on the kit. What if Eric Slick became Taylor Swift's touring drummer? That'd be the best news ever because I think that we might might be we might be in. You know, I saw a thing recently saying that like artists are problematic because like they have other people play on their songs and stuff, and they don't give them enough credit. And I'm like, all right, like, yeah, yes, sure, but like you can't thank your band at the end of every song, right? I mean, you, you it would be nice, like it, it would be nice if Taylor Swift tweeted out like, hey, here are the wonderful musicians who played on this song, they get like credits. hire like, them. They're, they obviously get paid for it. They get credit and everything. And I was like, man. If Taylor Swift tweeted out like, "Yo, like, Yo, th- 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 thanks, change. Slick, you're the man," that'd be that'd be pretty useful. Yeah. So hashtag t- t- Taylor Swift acknowledge Eric Slick party, and then us too. Why not? Yeah, I had a I think I had a dream once upon a time that I was backstage at a Taylor Swift concert, and Taylor Swift came into the room, and I went and got Randy. And introduced Randy to Taylor Swift. And then after I was like, does that count as me meeting Taylor Swift? Me being like, hey, Taylor, please meet this person. He's a big (laughs) fan. I think afterwards I I would say like, hey, I met Taylor Swift yesterday. Yeah. And they'd be like, what did you say? Be like, oh, I chose to not meet her because I didn't care. It was going to mean more to the person I was with. Yeah, it it would just mean way more. I would do that. If I were with you and we saw Taylor Swift walking around, I'd be like, Hey, me and my friend Pete. Hey, I'm sorry to do this. My friend Pete is such a big fan. I would appreciate you for that. Because then you're like you you're like, take I'll take this off your plate. Right. Mm-hmm. That's a good friend move. It'd be a hilarious friend move if I was like, Hey Taylor, I'm your biggest fan. This one over here talks about how you use you one five six o- four in all your songs. <laughs> <laughs> or you should take two Olympic cycles off. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, I still think hey, that. hey, Pete, will you be able to take this picture or do you hate Taylor Swift too much to do that? You hate her. I think that would, I think that's sneakily one of the funniest things that has ever come from brunch is that the we people were, reference a lot. What? The, the, uh, the Taylor Swift two, uh, two Olympic cycles, two Olympic cycles. And then she was like, fuck you guys. I'm gonna put put out three albums in a year. Yeah. The, oh, the, yeah. the, the goal of this episode 
was to discuss the sound of metal. <laughs> sound of metal, I'm sorry. It goes with a Pixies type style. It's not the sound of metal. It's called Sound of Metal. It's a film. You could stream it on Amazon Prime. It is nominated for multiple Oscars, th- three that we can think of. Best Picture, Best Actor, Riz Ahmed, Best Supporting Actor, Paul Racy, and we can only assume, you point this out as you Every were watching sound it. editing. Actually. Every yeah. sound editing thing. I don't which, know if it's sound mixing, sound, sound editing. I would just assume that it gets thrown in all the sound categories. Which, thank, I'm going to pull Lars Ulrich here, and when they win, they should go up and say, hey, I'd like to thank uh, Bohemian Rhapsody for not making a sequel this year. <laughs> That'd be very funny. Hell yeah. So... I loved it. What did you think? I thought that it was uh, it was very good. Worthy of be- I think worthy of best picture nomination. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Probably in that. Um, probably in the promising young woman tier where you hope there's better than it. Like if if this I ends up being the best movie a year, then it's probably not the strongest year. I would say that I liked promising young woman. M- more Mm -hmm. but like i think sound of metal probably has more like best picture qualities to it you know i'll agree with that like it probably belongs in the category more than promising young woman does but i personally liked promising young woman a bit more so i i think i would go that i don't know what i like better between the two of them but i put them in that like high b low a range Mm -hmm. so it's about a drummer who begins to lose his hearing and we also learned that he's an addict so he goes to a home slash center where he just basically learns how to deal with being deaf and the performance from the guy who runs the center home whatever it may be the actor's name is paul racy right yeah paul racy thankfully was nominated for best supporting actor because i was floored by his performance mainly probably because i hadn't seen him before yeah i uh i hadn't seen him either he gave me strong like um was um richard not richard jenkins um bullet richard jenkins no who's the guy from um uh shoot the one the movie with uh melissa mccarthy Oh, uh, can you forgive me? Can you ever forgive yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, Oh. Shoot, what's that guy's name? What is that guy's name? He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor in that movie as well. Um, the guy's name is Richard E. Grant. Richard E. Grant. He gave me Richard E. Grant vibes. The, I, I didn't see that as I was watching it, but as you mentioned it, I think that, that is bang on. He, He's terrific, and I'll just say... I'm not expecting to see a better scene in these Best Picture nominations than... Do you know what scene I'm talking about? Uh, I would guess the one where he sits down with him when he yes. comes back. From, yes. Yeah, okay. So, a big part of this is Riz Ahmed's character... Sorry, Ripped Ahmed, because he is ripped He's got drummer bod, man. He's got drummer bod, man. Yeah, just wearing those shorts. And... A big part of it is he, his reaction to losing his hearing is like, I need to get it back. I need to get it back. I need to get it back. And they tell him that there is a, there's a procedure he can get that won't really get his hearing back, but he'll kind of be able to hear things sort of. So at all costs, he's going to get it. He sells everything he has. He gets the surgery. And when he comes back to tell this guy, Joe, that, Joe has a long talk with him about how they're they have a culture there and an environment where they're trying to push that like it's so that deafness is not a handicap right that you can live with this and you can like, we're not trying to overcome deafness right and that it, I don't know and I, I kind of struggled with that that message there because I think that you could still be very supportive of that and also want to. I don't know, have your hearing, but I'm I, I am as far removed from those shoes as as somebody could be. But they have a long talk. They explain thing he basically explains a lot of things to him and it ends with and there's spoilers here, so uh I think we, we tweeted out that we were gonna talk about this, but um 
he explains like so you have to leave you you can't be here anymore and that scene to me was like legitimately stool bar gask like call me by your name end of call me by your name stool bar ask and obviously different messages and everything but just like two humans communicating with each other i thought that riz was great in that scene but i thought he was so great in that scene as soon as the movie ended i looked up whether or not he was nominated and yeah. was very very happy he was he's probably got no shot because daniel kaluuya is i would assume the favorite i haven't really looked at betting odds or anything but daniel kaluuya is probably going to win that for um his portrayal of fred hampton but man such a good performance such a good scene very sad movie yeah very sad movie and like very like emotionally gutting movie and there were a couple of those scenes that are that are like super heavy and like quite static in the way that uh call me by your name was where it's just like two people having a conversation but like you can feel sort of like the tension building and like the emotional weight of it and there was two and in, in the one that you mentioned was probably the one that stands out the most but the one at the end too where him and the girlfriend yeah where like they're having the conversation and they're not even really saying anything and they're not really even addressing the elephant in the room mm. but like it's so well done that you know exactly what is happening and like what they're getting at and it just is like so heartbreaking yeah right i mean my notes very frequently said this is really upsetting but i think them you you mentioned this the sound editing they kind of they they simulate his hearing for you and i don't know how accurate that would be and like what it sounds like as you're losing your hearing i don't know how a- accurate it is but it definitely like helps it oh my god it was because crucial you can't you just can't put yourself in that person's shoes if you don't know what it is they're going through or what it is like they're experiencing so even if it's not a hundred percent accurate it is extremely helpful to to put yourself in their shoes i mean i, I thought the movie was was so well put together i can't believe you made it this long without sounding the alarm you know what that means? The Affleck alarm. Only the Affleck alarm. Only in Boston. I was like two seconds into this movie. They're driving around. They're touring for. They're right, uh, driving from gig to gig. Town. And I was like, up, oh, up. Oh, only in Boston. <laughs> oh, we got a Boston movie, folks. Okay. Oh, hey. And they. It's not supposed to be in Boston. It says that the, that they're in Missouri. Oh, really? Yeah. It's Interesting. A, well, like the the girlfriend says, like I'm in I'm in Missouri. Come pick me up or something. And so, like, it's supposed to be in Missouri, but, like, they're on Route 2 in Saugus. They drive by yeah. Hockey Town. I think there's a shot in the beginning where it's either – there's two spots that look similar. One of them is in Harvard Square, and I don't think it's that. The other one is in Alston Brighton where there's kind of – I won't get into it. But uh, it was definitely like, hey, this is in, in Boston. So watch out for Ben Affleck. He's going <laughs> to – He's coming for best supporting actor. He's coming for best supporting actor. I did watch um what did I see was on TV the other day. He's just not that into you. I didn't even know that Ben Affleck was in that. And I've seen that movie before. Toss it on, watch the whole thing. He, who is his uh his love interest in that? Jennifer Aniston. Yeah, I thought so, yeah. He plays a guy in a long-term relationship that is not married, doesn't like the idea of marriage wants to just be partners and be with this person forever and his partner wants to get married is sad that she's not married eventually he's like hey i love you more than i dislike the idea of getting married let's get married i was watching it on and off so if he was a dick at any point i apologize if it sounds like i'm championing the championing championing the guy but he seemed like one of the uh, the better dudes in that no, Eric, movie uh, Eric Conley's in that movie Eric Conley's in that movie don't really know what he's doing he's trying to sell houses he's also trying to sleep with uh with Scarlett Johansson but Scarlett Johansson is sleeping with Bradley Cooper who is with Jennifer Conley who really doesn't like people who smoke <laughs> okay spends the whole movie saying hey are you smoking you better not be smoking hey I had someone in my family die of lung cancer 
when I say you better not smoke, you better not smoke. Doesn't seem like and he's like, if you would give me a second, <laughs> I would tell you I'm actually cheating on you <laughs> and not smoking. And she's like, hey, you're not smoking, right? And he's like, no. You're and she's like, these good. Beers. Then you are, you are doing all of the things that I hope you are doing. <laughs> and that's, I don't know, I, I, I felt weird watching that movie. Jennifer Goodwin's character is um, Jennifer, Jennifer Goodwin. Who's Jennifer Goodwin? You don't know Jennifer Goodwin? No. G I N N I F. Jennifer? It's like Jennifer, but they spell it out Jennifer, and I think her actual name is Jennifer. But I remember a million years ago seeing this. Like her, her mom had an act. She's from the South. Okay. So when she became famous, she's like, "I'm gonna go by Jennifer." Okay. She but she was kind of coming up for a second. You don't remember her? Look up Jennifer Goodwin. She's in Walk the Line. She's the she's. His first wife, Jennifer Goodwin. You'll definitely know her. Uh, kinda. Looks semi-familiar. But she's great. Yeah, she's great. I hadn't okay. seen. I haven't seen her in anything in a long time. But yeah, they they make her character. They're like, hey, I just really want to date, and when I go on a date, I wanna I wanna call back immediately and all that stuff, and. I don't know. It's a little sad to watch. And she's kind of a punchline throughout the movie. And I'm like, hey, people are like that about everything, though. Not necessarily. It doesn't have to be about relationships. I just hope someone gets to her and is like, hey, I think it's going to be all right. You're going to end up with. Actually, no, you're going to end up with Justin Long. So yeah, wouldn't say everything's going to <laughs> yeah. say everything's going to be perfect. But if you just really want to be with someone, there is going to be someone there. So you know, J- uh, Justin Long's married to in real life. Uh, Justin Long in real life is married to Jason Bateman. Close. Justine Bateman. Correct. Really? No. Who? Amanda Seinfeld. Really? Yeah. No, that's not true. She's married to the guy from the newsroom and Wild. No. I think so. Check it out. Hmm. Tom Sadowski? That's not Justin Long. Okay. <laughs> well, they were in a relationship. So it's time for the thrilling conclusion to wait. <laughs> Who is Justin Long married to? Justin Long is maybe single. I was going to say, uh, he can be single. Whatever. Wow, Justin Long being 5'9 is surprising. He seems like a tall, skinny person. Yeah. Uh... You know what I would love? I would love a no personal section. Had a relationship with Drew Barrymore, but they broke up in July 2008. Also dated Same Amanda Seinfeld yeah. mid 2013 for two years, breaking up in September 2015. Long endorsed Bernie Sanders for president in 2016 and endorsed Sanders again in 2020. Uh, it doesn't appear that Justin Long is married. Well, that answers that answers all of your questions. <laughs> 